Hello everybody and welcome to my channel, The Real Super Sam. Today is a brand new Forgotten Spider-Man Rogues episode and I hope you enjoy. Welcome to an awesome Easter, hashtag Spider-Man Sunday. To celebrate the 15th Forgotten Spider-Man Rogues episode, I'm looking at the supervillain Swarm. Swarm is a Nazi B-man who is super powerful and has some epic adventures. Swarm is a Spider-Man rogue who I love to read about, mostly because he is something of a horror-themed villain in his rogues gallery that has great potential for stories and at that, he's almost unbeatable. Swarm first appeared in the Champions issue 14, July 1977. There's a bee attack on a guy who has a briefcase. It's revealed to be a man attacking him, a bee man named Swarm. Swarm kills him by suffocating him with bees and tries to get the briefcase, but can because it's coated with bee repellent, so he leaves for the moment. At the end, Swarm calls upon millions of bees to attack the city. The story continued in the next issue, issue 15. Swarm invades Champions HQ, he captures the briefcase and the heroes Iceman and Darkstar. In this issue, we get his origin. He was a Nazi scientist that was killed by mutant bees and that took over his mind and body. Now Swarm has a mental control over a bunch of bees. Swarm supersizes the queen bee and with her help, Swarm will rule the earth. At the end, the superhero Hercules kills the queen bee. The other bees follow the queen, leaving the skeleton of Fritz von Meyer to rest. In November 1979, Swarm returned in Spectacular Spider-Man issue 36, and this time, fighting Spider-Man, his soon-to-be greatest enemy. At Peter Parker's college, Dr. Sloan and Mercy Kane are examining the skeleton of Swarm. He accidentally wakes Swarm up, and now Swarm is attacking the college. Spider-Man busts into the lab and meets Swarm. Spidey tries to fight him, but is overwhelmed by thousands of bees. The story continued in issue 37. While struggling with the bees, Spider-Man falls into some chemicals that cause Swarm to back away from him. While Spider-Man is healing and making a plan, Swarm is right outside creating a giant beehive for a new queen. Spider-Man is the only one they can get a hold of to go into the hive and stop Swarm. Using the bee repellent in his web fluid, he sprays Swarm into Queen Bee, so the bees leave on Meyer and the Queen Bee dies. Swarm then first appeared in media in Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends Episode 5, Swarm, on October 10th, 1981. He was then in the last half of the four-issue miniseries, The Lethal Foes of Spider-Man. He was a cameo on the last page of Issue 3, and then in Issue 4. But it was just a cameo, Spider-Man actually remembered him. Swarm gets blasted by a psychic link gun, disrupting the skeleton and the bee connection, apparently killing him forever. He was next in Secret Defenders issue 18 and 19. He surprisingly returned with little to no explanation on how. It was a cool story, but Swarm was barely a plot in it, and the most interesting thing that happens with him is he becomes a full-on B-Man without his, the purple cloak. Swarm was later in the Sensational Spider-Man issues 9 and 10. Of course, Swarm is back. This time he is more powerful thanks to the recent psychic maelstrom created by the X-Men villain Onslaught. Swarm has come to use the machines in the lab to revive his human host mind and become whole again. In this issue, Ben Riley is Spider-Man and he arrives just as Swarm completes his plan. In the next issue, as Spidey is entering Swarm's new hive, he plans and sees the bees remember Peter Parker Spider-Man fighting them, so they avoid Ben Riley Spider-Man. Spider-Man arrives and tries to fight Swarm, but Swarm is too powerful, so being the scientist he is, Spider-Man tricks into lunging some equipment to the roof for him, so Spider-Man can disrupt the air vibrations with the machine that made Swarm's bees fly. Doing this knocks all the bees out, and Spider-Man grabs the queen bee, the bee that allows Swarm to keep coming back, and stops it from happening again. He was then in the Sensational Spider-Man Volume 2, Issues 29 and 30, as part of the Chameleon's Exterminators team. Swarm just returns here for a bit and is after Mary Jane. He's defeated when Mary Jane and her friends turn on the sprinklers. He was in a single issue of Marvel's Adventures Spider-Man issue 38, but nothing groundbreaking happened. He was in a Sinister Six for the live-action musical Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark in 2010. Now, there was a swarm in media in Ultimate Spider-Man, but instead of bees, it was spider tracers, controlled by a scientist previously employed by Tony Stark. 
So Swarm, it seems like he can be defeated really easily, but man, what a scary rogue. Not just a bee man with hives and a giant queen bee, but also a walking skeleton. The coolest thing with Swarm is his design. But he may not be so forgotten for long, he was referenced in Spider-Man PS4. To me, Swarm is a horror villain, a scary threat for Spider-Man to face. I could see him in a movie or the main threat of a TV series, just give him more of a character. That was Swarm, a forgotten Spider-Man villain I really like. Thank you all for watching. Bye guys, and have a good day, and happy Easter.